Hello students, this is Mr. Martyr, and we're continuing our conversation of the Industrial Revolution. In this video, we're going to talk about changes, excuse me, we're going to talk about the steam boat and the locomotive. We're going to talk about changes in transportation, improvements in communications. You want to finish or fill in these three boxes in your Cornell note guide. All right, so when we left off, we were talking about the cotton gin and how that changed the economy. We're also going to talk about transportation, and the first invention is Robert Fulton's steamboat, Fulton's Folly, an American inventor, invented in 1807. So for all of you guys that get discouraged after building projects, Fulton, uh, many of his early steamboats uh, caught fire and in one instance exploded. People were on the, the banks of, of the uh, Mississippi River, and they heard just a, a loud bang, and... They knew that it was Robert Fulton playing or pioneering with his steamboat. How the steamboat worked, you guys can see it's got a little wheel here. Typically, later steamboats will have a big wheel on the back. But as coal is put into a furnace, it generates the heat, generates the energy. The smoke is emitted from the top. And that steam, rather than just blowing up, it's harnessed, it's let out, and turns the wheel, which in turn paddles the boat. So rather than using wind power, steam is going to be a, a new instrument uh, to, for transportation. People will try and use these types of steamboats on in the ocean. Um, it's very problematic because the ocean is much stronger than these tiny wood, wooden uh, boats. And unfortunately, it's just not strong enough. So eventually, this is going to be a precursor to uh, steam ships, big steam ships that will cross the Atlantic and then later the Pacific. Uh, but this is that early invention that's used for navigating uh, narrow waterways like the Missouri and Mississippi River. Next, in 1814, so only seven years after Fulton develops the steamboat, George Stevenson develops the steam locomotive. And this is a precursor to what? Well, it's a precursor to the railroad. It is not the railroad per se, but it is the locomotive. And again, you guys can see there are carriages that used to go on the back of horses with the round wheels were pulled by an engine that, again, is powered by steam, powered by coal. Where you need railroads or where you have locomotives, you will need locomotive tracks, as you guys can see at the bottom. So that's going to be the modern precursor to the railroad. Now, what's really interesting about the revolution in transportation is this. So let's say you lived in the town of Edinburgh. In 1836, if you were riding on horse and buggy, it took you 43 hours to get from Edinburgh to London. Now in 1850, hop on the train and it takes you about a half a day, 12 hours. All right. If you're going to the soccer match, Liverpool, what would take you a full day by horse and buggy now takes you six and a half hours. That's roughly driving from Atlantic City to West Virginia. Okay. The town of Exeter, what used to take 18 hours, now takes four and three quarters, almost five hours. That again, that's almost a drive down south, probably maybe uh, Fredericksburg, or maybe up north beyond New York City. The town of Birmingham, what used to take 11 hours by horse and buggy, now takes three hours. A three-hour drive is roughly the distance from Egg Harbor Township to Washington, D.C., give or take a little bit. So it's very close, very quick. And if you wanted to go to the town of Brighton in 1836, it would take you about six hours by horse and buggy, and it now takes you an hour and a quarter by locomotive. That's roughly the distance traveling from Egerman Township, if any of you have been to the King of Prussia Mall. It cuts down travel time, which is going to increase people's ability for free time and productivity. And I know in the earlier class we talked a little bit about you know what happens in the future once machines start doing the job of people. Well, you can see that trend's been happening for quite some time with the development of the railroad. It's giving people more and more free time to do things, which is quite remarkable. Additionally, goods can travel. Now meats or other uh, delicacies can be harvested. Rather than salting them up and loading them with a salt for a 43-hour horseback carriage, you know they can get to a market in 12 hours or six hours down to an hour which means goods are going to be able to move around the country much more effectively. So the railroad is going to have a tremendous impact on uh, the way Great Britain and Europeans uh, use transportation. Okay. Other changes in transportation. 
1793, James Watts develops the uh, steam engine. And then in 1885, big jump here, Carl Benz develops the first automobile. A lot of people think that it was Henry Ford. Henry Ford is an American uh, auto manufacturer, but it was Carl Benz, the precursor to Mercedes Benz. Uh, he took four bicycle wheels, strong tires. He put uh, a bench on top with a small motorized engine. Again, it could get up to top speeds of 15 miles an hour, which is roughly the speed of, of going down a hill on a bike very quickly. Eventually, Henry Ford will come along. So now we're moving into the later industrial age. By 1908, he will develop the assembly line. Why is the assembly line important? Well, the assembly line allows people to mass produce, mass produce um, cars and vehicles. And then eventually it will make cars a little bit more affordable and a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to hold up there. If you need to uh, watch this video again, please feel free to do so. But make sure you have uh, these two slides, Steamboat, the locomotive, and changes in transportation uh, down in your notes.